Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're in Foundry VTT. We're back in the house of Strahd because I want to make a few changes before we move on to the dungeon part of the death house. Um, so you can probably notice I've turned the grid, um, I've turned it red and made it a bit more visible for the purposes of what I want to do. Now in the last video I spent a while messing around with the stairs um, trying to get those working using the active tile triggers and it works it's fine but it wasn't brilliant it wasn't elegant uh, and it's not the way that I should be doing it um, now in the video when we looked at levels we looked at using the ladder to go up and down and I was thinking about oh, this the way the stairs are in here multiple levels and things um, it's not going to work properly and rather than playing with it and working out if it would work uh, I just jumped straight to using Monk's Active Tile Triggers instead. And that was a mistake, and I shouldn't have done that, and I made my life much harder and ended up with a less elegant situation. So I should have stuck with using levels to do this. So that's what I want to fix in this video to start with, and it's why I've put the grid on, So, or partly why I've put the grid on. So I just want to make a few changes to this bit before we move on to that dungeon. Okay, so top right, I've got open my levels tool, and you can see that I've got the place drawings as stairs highlighted. Okay, so we're going to fix this and do this properly. So this is the ground floor. We've got the spiral staircase, and you enter at the bottom here, and you go round and go up. So up the top here is where I want my trigger. So drawings as, um, as stairs, I want the, um, I can use the polygon tool. And I want to draw in up here my trigger for the top of the stairs, right? And that should work fine. And so when you come around here, you step on this bit, it's going to take you up to the first floor and drop you in the same location here, the top of the stairs, right? And then if you come and hit that trigger, it will take you down again. So the way it works is you place it on the on the lower level and it will automatically make stairs or uh, a, a transition to the level above so that's fine we should be able to go up and down there and then we come around this side and here we should have our second trigger I'm going to make it nice and big to make sure it will activate properly. Um, and that will take us, again, because I've done it on this level, it will then should take us to the second floor and dump us about the same location here and then round the top here. And you can see Haley's already upstairs. Uh, and, of course, I hadn't put anything in for this attic stairway. So I need to put this in as well. That's a nice easy one because it's, a, it's just a rectangle. Um, so that should work. Uh, so let's grab Haley. Um, we're already up here, so let's check the attic stairs. There we go. Automatically takes us up to the attic and then drops us down again. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Look how smooth that transition is. Yeah, you barely even notice there's a transition from a player's point of view. And hopefully, if I've got these right, we should just... Oh yeah, that's right. It's going to be this one. Descend the stairs, lovely, and then go downstairs again. Great. We're now on the ground floor. We can go back up. Here we are. Just make sure it works in all of those areas. Uh, whoops. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Downstairs again. Here we are. Go up. Go down. Up. Up. Down. Yep. Yeah, that all works perfectly. Now, obviously, these look ugly. Ugly as. But we can obviously fix that. So let's start with the ground floor here. Double click on these and we can go to the text and I can make that text fully uh, opaque. Uh, sorry, transparent. Get rid of it. All right. So that's one. Text is gone. Um, but those lines, I can also, if I want to change the color of them and also turn down that opacity. So I might turn them down to about 0.4. So they can just about see that on there. Um, so the player characters, I mean, perhaps I could have drawn them a little bit better shapes, um, but they're going to be visible but not intrusive and I think that's quite important uh, I don't want to wrong one uh, I don't really want to be in you know intruding on the atmospherics and things with mechanics um, but I also need them to be visible so I can do that on all of these again just get rid of that text make it completely transparent and the lines turn the transparency right the way down and of course I could turn those off completely if I wanted to from a transparency point of view um, Where's, uh, where's Haley? Did we leave her on the first floor, didn't we? So yeah, if I select Haley now, 
you can just about see this trigger without too much drama. Um, you can't see it the other direction, but that's okay. You can only see it at the bottom, but that works beautifully. So that's puzzle number one. Uh, that's much, much smoother. It's much nicer. It's part of levels. Let's do that. Uh, it also cuts down the amount of additional actual tiles we have on there. Uh, and that's a bit of a concern for the next thing I wanted to do. So in the attic, what I wanted is creaky floorboards. Now, my original idea, and I created a playlist and had a little test of it, and I couldn't get it to work the way I wanted to, not without potentially having to write macros and stuff, um, which, you know, I'm, that's not my forte at all. So what I would like to do is to have basically one tile that covers pretty much the whole of the attic that whenever a player moves on that tile, not necessarily into or out of the tile, but moves on that tile, it will randomly choose one of the uh, or it will has a chance to randomly choose one track from the playlist and play it and i couldn't get that to work um i certainly didn't want it to loop but what i found it was doing is it was going oh it was just playing the whole lot so it would play all of the different creeks rather than picking one at random and playing that so that wasn't what i wanted to do um so i have obviously got a you know a, a way of doing this but it, it means i've got a lot more tiles so whoops a daisy have to be really careful with tiles on tiles i want to create a new tile let's create it stop it create a new tile please I'll create it outside here let's do that all right and then bring it over that will work for us okay so i'm going to make this the size of one tile here okay and then open this up um, and a couple of things I want to do. Once up, one, I want to give it an image, um, and I want to give it my image. If I can remember where I left it, it wasn't in here. Uh, do, 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 do. It might have been in my interface. There we go. Just use the black image um, because then I can make it completely transparent and it vanishes from sight for us. Okay, so I can do that. Don't want it to be an overhead, don't want it to be an animation, but I do want it to be a trigger, and it's only on this level okay so by default this trigger is only on this allow all tokens anyone that enters this uh, and i'm going to turn this percentage down a bit um maybe 25 percent of the time maybe 33 percent of the time we're going to allow that to go off um as many times as we like and the actions are going to be we want to add to the action and this is where i was playing with uh is it under p for playlist i was playing with yeah here it is playlist sorry about that um creating a playlist which i've got here with my creaky floorboards in and i wanted it to select one track and play it but actually play plays the whole playlist so that's the bit that i couldn't quite work out even with the loop off it wasn't working so i don't want to be using that what i am going to use instead is play sound file and then i can pick my uh my sound file wherever i popped my sounds um did i put it in here i'd like to think i put it in here that would make sense wouldn't it of course i didn't this is the problem i've changed um i've changed places here we go i put it in the curse of strad so creaky floorboard one we can do that um full volume for the moment i'm going to play it for everybody so everybody can hear it i don't want it looping um i can restrict it as a scene if i want to but i do want to prevent sound if it's already playing because i'm going to have a number of these and there might be different uh different characters walking on different ones and i don't want it just to get you know a bit too crazy because you know there'll be players who go oh look it creaks if i step here and they'll be going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards and forwards <laughs> trying to set them off it will happen um all right so i can do that and play that one file and i can update that and so i've now got one tile that will play that one sound file so i can actually copy and paste this into a number of other places around here but before i do that i am going to copy and paste it and i'm going to edit this one uh, i'm going to change that uh no i'm not going to change it that's fine uh, i just have to remember for a moment uh, back in the actions here, I'm going to edit this and I'm going to select my second creaky floorboard instead. Okay, so that's fine. And then I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to paste it again. And for this one, I am going to 
update that sound file again uh, for my third creaky floorboard. Okay, so now I've got three different tiles that do different sounds. All right, so uh, let's find Haley. Where did I leave you, Haley? I've abandoned you again, haven't I, my dear? There you are. Okay, well, she can just come upstairs now. We know that works. <laughs> come on. Up we go. Thank you very much. And we've got our tiles here. So um, obviously volume has been an issue for me. So hopefully this isn't too loud or too quiet. We've got one creek. A different creek. And that's our third creek. So we've got three different creeks that go off when a character walks over those tiles. Obviously we don't want these to be big black smears. So let's, let's select this first one. Um, in here we're going to make this completely transparent so therefore it can't be seen and now we can just go on you know you want to oh yeah it's pasting them but of course they're invisible we can now just move these around wherever we want and I know you can't see them but that's because they're invisible okay and then we can select this one we know this is a different sound we again can make it transparent copy yep it is copying and pasting and we can just paste these in other places as well and just liberally sprinkle them anywhere we like pretty much mustn't forget this room down here and then I'm gonna select my third one again I'm going to make this invisible and it's easier to make it invisible and then copy and paste it rather than uh, going round afterwards and undoing all of the copy ones, you know, making them all transparent. Uh, let's make sure we've got one or two more in these rooms. There we go. Now, if you're not sure where we've put them, we should be able... We should be able to select all of our tiles. There, there we go. So we can see there's a whole bunch of tiles there selected um, that are all little creaky sound files. Uh, so Haley should be able to walk around now and we should hear some of those creaks go off. Oh, there was one. There we go. So they're not going off all the time. Um, and you might argue that I probably ought to put that up to 50% or, or not. But they're just going to go off seemingly randomly. Because even if a character thinks that they've set it off, they might try and step back on the same thing to see if it does it again. So it almost sounds, from a player's point of view, that they're random. There we go. <laughs> um, that random noises are happening. So I'm quite happy with that. I like the way that that works. So one other thing I wanted to change before we move on to doing the uh, the cellar bit is uh, the windows. So I was looking at the windows and thinking about them. And one, this room here annoys me because it doesn't appear to have a window in it. Um, also, what's going on with my fog? I've moved. I've moved. I've moved something, haven't I? I've moved my fog tile. I'll have to fix that. I'll have to fix that. Can you see though, I've got no fog down here and I've got fog up here. So the tile that controls the fog, I've inadvertently um, moved that. I can fix it, don't worry. I've done that basically with that fog tile, but I'll sort that in a minute. Okay, I'll do it off screen. You don't need to, <laughs> don't need to watch me suffer anymore. All right, so um, back to our walls. Um, so first of all, let's just check we're happy with our walls around things like the stairs. Yes, we are. Yeah, we sorted those out. That's no problem. Um, probably want to put a wall across here, though, to stop them wandering off the end there um, and also across the bottom there. Now, what I can do with both of these is... <sighs> is I can make sure they don't restrict light or sight or, or sounds, um, but they just can't walk the wrong way for those. So that's fine. Um, ground floor, happy with that, that's fine. Um, 
second floor that's fine and I put this one in here for exactly that purpose which is good um, now where there was a problem area that I found that I wanted to fix uh, in the attic this is fine this comes up to these stairs that's all good uh, but it was this wall here that actually I want this to be a window in the middle here because it doesn't make sense that this room doesn't have a window at all it's a bit weird isn't it so I'm just going to put that in there and I'm going to make this a, a door. Now we don't have the window option um, in here, but we can do other things. We can do other things. Um, so we can pop that in there. Now if what we want to do, because we want that to be, yeah, okay, sure. You can open it and so you can see out. But I think for the attic it makes sense, especially the children being locked in here, that there's bars on these windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to draw another wall here where I'm going to make this restrict movement but doesn't restrict any light or sound or anything like that. So that way characters can open the window but they can't go out of it because there's bars in the window. So if you if you get what I'm saying there I think that uh, that makes perfect sense. So I should be able to do that and I can actually just effectively put bars across these windows. The players won't even notice that they're there, except they can't they can't go out of these windows. I mean, I'm not sure why they would want to go out the windows. I mean, they might want to go out this window to go in that window. Um, there's nothing stopping them from going around. Uh, but I think when they try to flee the house um, towards the end, uh, if they don't appease the house... Um, and the house effectively gets violent, they may try to immediately flee out of a window, drop down, and off they go. So uh, I don't mind if they want to be smart enough to be able to do that. Now, if you're familiar with the module, um, if they upset the house when they're trying to escape, all of the windows turn into bricked up anyway. Um, so we have a choice of using the same map for the escape or replicating this entire scene so the players think it's exactly the same scene but suddenly all these windows are not windows anymore um, so we could do that we could do either way it would save kind of changing um, you know changing this on the fly it depends where that's going to fall within your sessions really I guess so have I done that with all the windows up here in the attic yes I have which is great yes you can look out but you can't go out I think that works absolutely fine so uh, what do I need to do? I need to make sure I go back and configure that grid um, and put that back to pretty much invisible. In fact, that's probably a little too much. It, yeah, you can't see the grid at all, but oh, there we go, creaking away. Uh, but that's fine. Okay, so yeah, just a few little updates I wanted to do there just to change this a little bit stairs work much much nicer than they did before um, I've got my updated animated broom and everything else that uh, we talked about in the previous video that's all good I think this is absolutely ready to go now um, all we need to do is when they find the secret door and they descend the stairs so then we're going to change to a new scene and this is where I will use an active tile trigger for that to go down into the dungeon so let's uh let's do that right now before we end this video we're going to create a new scene because I don't want to use levels for this because it's a very different um a very different uh kind of feeling to it it's a very different level um because it's actually a dungeon so I need to find Cursor Strahd I'm just looking in the other window making sure I've got my map um, and I know which number I'm using for it because I've got a couple of different versions let me pull this over here let's have a little look uh, so, come on make them big so we've got this version which I think was Piram's version hang on a minute that's the Count's Crypt that's not the one I want um, I did have, so that's the Count's Lair, this is the house itself, I must have put them in here already, well organised, as always, come on you're used to this by now, that's, that's my only excuse I've got is that you're used to it, that's not right is it, 
Uh, so we've got the lower dungeon and the upper dungeon. So I'll open this up um, twice. Uh, so we've got this map that we will be using. So this will be our next scene to bring in. Um, just checking this against that one we were just looking at, which was uh, this one. Yeah. So we've got a choice of these two, which to use, because this is, in fact, the same one. So we can either use this map on the left, which I'm pretty sure was Piram's one, uh, or we've got this one as well. Um, gosh, I don't know which one to use now. I mean, this one's kind of... Is it, is it too bright? I mean, it's already got the lights on the map, so I might not use that one. I might use the one we've got on the right here. This, um, well, it's called Upper Dungeon Alternate. I think I might use that one purely because it hasn't it's not lit up I don't think it's as pretty as that map do you know what I'm gonna have a think about that I'm not gonna do that now I'm gonna have a think about that and in the next video when we actually move on to doing the dungeon you will see the decision I've made on that which one I'm going with so uh, thank you very much for watching do appreciate it bit of a fiddly one just tidying up a little few little bits here um, one other thing I'm going to do uh, off camera is for outside of the house on the ground floor i'm just going to look put a little button in to add um, one of those wolf howls in which was a suggestion somebody made about that oh that's a really kind of nice thing we could add if the characters are dithering around outside not too sure whether to help rose and thorn yes the fog will constrain them but just adding a couple of wolf howls in might encourage them to get their backsides in the house into in inverted commas safety so thank you for watching um yeah, let me know what you think. And again, suggestions are always welcome. And I will see you in the next one.